The teachers of the law, the Pharisees, brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law of Moses, it commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, If any one of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Again he stopped, stooped down, and wrote in the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time. The older ones first, until only Jesus was left with the woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. This is the word of the Lord. Happy New Year! 2020, you saw that coming. 20 years since the millennium. It's a new decade, it's a new year. And often at this time of year, we begin to think of new beginnings, of new priorities, of new resolutions. But they are always come in the context of what has gone before. As we make our resolutions, we do so looking forward, hopefully, to the future, but we do so with a keen eye on what has just passed. You won't be surprised to know that I've made a resolution to lose a bit of weight and get fitter, and that's me looking optimistically into the future, imagining a fitter, leaner, stronger, faster me. The diet starts tomorrow. <laughs> but I have got a new pair of football boots, so Church FC, watch out. But why do I make that resolution? Because my immediate past has been filled with chocolate. <laughs> and overeating. And beer. And not really doing very much. And if I'm honest, a wistful regret that I'm not fitter leaner, stronger, and faster. I'm also making a resolution to read more books, to go on more walks, to spend more time with family and friends. And those are good things, and those things will help me physically and mentally and intellectually. But again, that says as much about my past as it does about my hopeful future. It's a reaction against my frustrations that I spend too much time on my phone, on Twitter, and on watching silly TV, and I've not got a good balance between work and life and friends and family. It was interesting to hear Nick's resolution. I suspect Nick's resolution is as much to do with his past as it is to do with his future. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but it also might be that we haven't got our priorities right. And that we think a sudden jolt on the 1st of January might just help us to realign and get everything straight. And maybe, maybe it will. And so we carry our frustrations, our regrets, our sorrows, our sadness, our ideals, into a new year, seeking change, seeking something better, seeking a new start, seeking to put the past behind us, <coughs> seeking hope. 
And we perhaps do all that with a nagging doubt that actually, perhaps, nothing is going to change. And if that's you this morning, then hang on as we explore the Word of God and what it may be saying to us as we enter 2020. So let's pray. Father God, I thank you for the new year. I thank you that we can come here together to worship on the first Sunday of this new year in freedom. To worship you in spirit and in truth. And Father, I just pray that you will open our eyes and our ears to your voice this morning. That you will speak to us about our lives, about our priorities, and about our journey with you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, I was given a free reign this morning to choose the reading, which, let me tell you, is a bit of a mixed blessing, because I had about five readings before we, we, we got to the one that we actually had. And when I was thinking, the, the, the most obvious reading that jumps out at you when you're talking about new priorities is Jesus saying, seek first the kingdom of God, and then all these things will be added unto you. That's a good place to start. That's a really helpful verse. And in a, in a way, that's what this sermon is about. That we should seek first the kingdom of God. But then I thought about New Year's resolutions, new priorities, new ways of living. And I was drawn to that reading in John about the woman who was about to be stoned. It's not an obvious reading for the first Sunday of the New Year, but it spoke loud and clear to me in a couple of ways, really in the ways that Jesus spoke to the woman. First, the passage really does speak of new beginnings. A woman was about to be stoned to death for adultery. Imagine what that must have been like for her. There is a baying mob of righteous, angry people throwing the law book at her, saying, because of what you have done, you have to die. And we are ready and we are committed to do that because it is the right thing to do. They're humiliating her. And she is within minutes of suffering a, a horrendous, painful, gruesome death. And then <coughs> Jesus intervenes. And a few minutes later, that woman is walking away. After the mob had gone, Jesus spoke to her. And this is what he said. <coughs> Jesus straightened up and asked the woman, Where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. Go now and leave your life of sin. In other words, you can go. You can go, go and live. But you cannot go and live in the way that you have been doing. You need a whole new set of priorities, a whole new way of living, a whole new way of doing things. Jesus, in effect, had given her her life back. But in giving it her back, he said that nothing could or should ever be the same again. So point one. Jesus is the giver of life. But don't be surprised if that gift of life means that we have to change the way that we do some things. And the second point is related to that. We saw that with our New Year resolutions, they were often born out of the frustrations or the unhappiness 
that we have in the way that we live our life. And those aren't things we can just park and forget about because we've turned over the page of a calendar. Jesus said that, woman, go now and leave your life of sin. And we imagine that she went skipping off, happy into her future to live a pure, blameless and sin-free life. But was it really like that? Jesus was telling her she had to change everything about her life. Leave your life of sin. Change everything about your relationships. Potentially change everything about your family life. Change how you spend your time. Change how you think of yourself. Change how you think of others. Be prepared to accept how people might change their attitude towards you and your image of you. Change everything about who you are. That's not an easy thing to do. You see, even though there were new priorities, new promises, new ways of doing things, like us, they were all in the context of the life that woman was living, the context of her immediate past. Jesus spoke into the life that she was living in the same way that Jesus speaks into the context of the life that we are living. But in doing so, we have to be prepared to change the way that we live some of that life. A couple of chapters further on in John, Jesus says this. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever entered by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. That they may have life, not will. That woman in our story, she was given a choice. Go and leave your life of sin. It was an instruction, but it was also a choice. And likewise, we have choices to make. We make resolutions because we feel we are not living life to its fullness, whatever that may mean for us. And there is perhaps one thing that we all want for ourselves in 2020 and those that we love, and that is to be able to live life to the full, to make the best of our health, our relationships, our opportunities, our circumstances, our work, our family, our desires, our hopes, and our dreams. But as we seek those, as we look to make the choices necessary, we are reminded again of Jesus' words. Seek first the kingdom of God, then all these things will be added to you as well. As I was thinking last night, I was reading through the sermon, thinking, what, what am I trying to say in like a sentence? And uh, I was breaking one of my resolutions. I was on Twitter again, and, and Ali Campbell retweeted something which I thought was really, really poignant. And it was a quote from Henri Nguyen, who's a Catholic theologian. And I think it really strikes at the heart of what I'm trying to say. And he said this, you cannot think yourself into a new way of living. You must live yourself into a new way of thinking. You cannot live your, you cannot think yourself into a new way of living. You must live yourself into a new way of thinking. 
And what does that mean for us? As we seek first the kingdom of God, in the context of what we heard, in the context of new priorities, in the context of the choices we're facing, in the context of the baggage that we're bringing. Well, I want to give four hooks that we may choose to adopt that might just be the New Year's resolutions we're looking for. They may be the priorities we need. And they're designed to prepare and sustain us for the whole of 2020. Not simply as a reaction to the disappointments, frustrations and anxieties of 2019. So here they are. First things first. In the first few moments of each new day, seek God. Pray. It might be a simple prayer, but just do it. As you wake up in the morning, in those first few moments, make a habit of doing it. Make a habit of just saying a simple prayer. It may be helpful for you to have a, a psalm printed at your bedside or by your kettle or on your dashboard. And I think Psalm 63 might be a good place to start. Think about praying this every morning. Psalm 63 says this. You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you. In a dry and parched land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. I will be fully satisfied as with the richest of With singing lips my mouth will praise you. On my bed I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night. Because you are my help, I will sing in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you. Your right hand upholds me. First priority, first few moments of each day, seek God, pray. It takes less than a minute. So that's number one. At the start of each new day, <coughs> pray. Second priority, at the start of each new week, <coughs> worship. It says in Acts that on the first day of the week the disciples came together to break bread. They came together to join in an act of worship. They came together to encourage each other, to be with one another, to support one another, to pray for one another, but to worship. And I'm as a priority. Each new week, start your week with some act of worship. And I know it's not that easy always to get to church on a Sunday morning, and that's for all a variety of really good reasons. But the principle is we are called and encouraged to worship together each week. And we have a whole variety of ways of doing this in St. James. We've got services at 9 at 10.30 on a Sunday. We have services on a, on a Wednesday. We've got the online where our YouTube channel, you can participate in worship. And good morning to you this morning if you are doing it that way. They're part of the church family. That's part of worshipping together. We have deeper on a Wednesday night. We have community church on a Tuesday morning, which is running again during Lent. We have Friday superheroes on a Friday. And if you can't make it virtually or physically, then you can find your own models of worship. Listen to podcasts. Listen to worship music. Tune into the BBC Daily Service. It's important to find time and space to worship. 
that is not only sustainable, <coughs> but is life-sustaining. So each day, start with prayer. Each week, start with worship. Each month, start with fasting. Fasting is a really good spiritual discipline, and one that I'm not very good at, unless dryish January counts, which let me tell you, it doesn't. <laughs> fasting is biblical, and it's sacrificial. It's denying yourself for the purposes of coming closer to God, to focusing, to knowing his purposes, to focusing on worship and on prayer, including prayers of intercession. So on the first day, what about fasting? Deny yourself some food or just have some simple food like some soup and spend time worshiping, thanking God for his goodness, praying for yourself and praying for others. One thing that might really help with this is to spend a few moments over the next week thinking about what your New Year resolutions would be for others. What would your New Year's resolutions be for your wife, or for your husband, or for your children, or for your grandchildren, or for your niece, or for your colleague, or for your, colleague, or for your manager? Think about what you, what you wish for them. What would you want their resolutions to be? And during that time of fasting, pray into their lives. Pray into the hopes and desires that you have for them. Pray for God's presence in their life. Pray for how you might be part of that revealing God's purposes for their lives. Pray that God's kingdom may come in circumstances affecting their life. This is exciting. This is world changing. This is life changing. So as we start each day with prayer, we start each week with worship. We start each month with fasting. How do we start each year? Well, I suggest that we start the first of the year with dedication. We dedicate. It's a dedication of our lives to serve God, worship God, to acknowledge Jesus as our Lord and Saviour, to recommit to following him, to build his kingdom, to bring his grace and his love and his mercy and his peace and his righteousness into our lives, into our families, into our church, into our home, into our relationships, into our ambitions and plans, into our town, into our workplaces. We dedicate ourselves as individuals to do that and as a church to do that. And in a few moments, we're going to have a short act of dedication. So my prayer for 2020 is that we as individuals, but also as a collective family, go on a journey. Part of the trouble with resolutions is destination. I want, you to, I want to simply encourage you to travel the journey. Pray every day and see what God is saying to you. Listen for his promptings. If you want to pray more than simply praying that psalm each day, then find a resource that helps you with a quiet time. There's lots out there. I'm at the moment using Lectio 365, which you can download onto your phone, and it's a quiet time of about between eight and 10 minutes a day. Just leads you through a short act of prayerful reflection. But listen out for God. Listen to his promptings. Talk to people about it. There's enough people here that can help you. So pray each day, worship each week, fast every month. And in doing so, 
be aware that praying and worshipping and fasting and dedicating are part of building a relationship. And be prepared for that to develop and grow and change and take you in places and directions that you weren't necessarily anticipating. As we found in our reading of the woman being stoned, lives change, lives are transformed when we encounter Jesus. And as we move into an act of dedication, I just want us all, in our own way, to engage with this. You might be feeling that 2020 is already not looking like too good a year. You may feel that God has given up on you. That actually, I've tried all that and God wasn't listening and God wasn't working. Well, I'm asking, rededicate. God hasn't given up on you. God has got plans and purposes for you as individuals, for us as a church. And so, if you are willing, if, and if you are able, I'm just going to ask you to stand now as we dedicate ourselves at the beginning of this new year. The words will come up on the screen, and the words in yellow are the words we'll say together. So as we follow the way of Christ, the presence of God among us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God calls us to share in worship. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Jesus, Jesus you, you are, are the way. way. Guide us on our journey. God calls us to share in prayer. Jesus said, remain in me and I will remain in you. Jesus, Jesus you, you are the way. way. Guide us on our journey. God calls us to share the scriptures. Jesus met his disciples on the road and opened the scriptures to them. Jesus, Jesus you are the way. Guide us on our journey. God calls us to share in communion. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. Jesus, you are the way. Guide us on our journey. God calls us to share in service. Jesus said, as you do it for the least of these, you do it for me. Jesus, you are the way. Guide us on our journey. God calls us to share the good news. Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations. Jesus, you are the way. Guide us on our journey. Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that you are the Son of God, who died for the sins of the world. You have died and resurrected to give us eternal life. Therefore, we confess you as our personal Lord and Savior. We offer you our entire lives, and we serve you throughout the days of our lives. Amen. I'm just going to ask the worship group to come up as we just hold this moment of dedication. And just ask your spirit, Lord, to come and rest among us. To speak into our lives as we deal with those frustrations and those anxieties of, 20, of 2019. And we look forward to the hope and the desires and the aspirations that you have in 2020. <coughs> Father, just come by the power of your spirit and speak to us. <coughs> 